Clone Hero. First developed in 2015 by Srylane II under the name Guitar PG, is now popularized as the go-to Plastic Instruments fan game. As opposed to the main title Guitar Hero games, Clone Hero boasts many features that hardcore rhythm gamers can enjoy, from easy custom song installation to the ability to speed up songs in-game and many streamer customization options. It truly does have it all. This video is for completely new community members. I'll be going over everything about installing, using, optimizing, and enjoying Clone Hero. This video is not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. For starters, installing the game is incredibly simple. On clonehero.net, press the download button and wait for it to finish downloading. The file comes in a .7z file format. This is a zipped folder that can be opened using 7-zip or WinRAR, which you can install from their respective websites. Inside the zip, you'll find the base Clone Hero folder. Take this folder and place it wherever you want on your computer, though if you have an SSD, it'd be better to put the folder there as song scanning will be much faster. The base game currently comes with Troopers of the Stars, a Dragon Force song that Herman Lee licensed for use of the dev team, and Enact the Ending by Thousand Sun Sky, though I assume you're going to want more songs than that. Luckily, the community has you covered. Linked in the description will be a website called Chorus, which is a massive individual chart searching tool for finding specific songs that you want, and a Google Drive document that has every verified charter's work and every main community setlist release. Between the two of them, they have around 40,000 charts for the taking. My favorite setlists from the spreadsheet are Anti-Hero 2, Purple Tunnel Hero 2, and Paradigm, hashtag not spawns. Once you have the songs you want, take the folders and place them in the Songs folder, located in your install directory. The game reads folders in folders in folders, and uses your personalized organization method as set lists, which can be used in-game for playlist sorting. Now, how about playing the game? Finding a guitar you can use is pretty simple, though can be a time-consuming process. If you want a cheap guitar, you can find them for $1-$5 to $5 at your local thrift stores or Goodwills. This isn't really a reliable method, and most of the time you won't find anything, but it's no doubt the cheapest. The most reliable method for finding a guitar is through eBay. They're going to be a bit more expensive, around the $30 range, but you'll get what you're looking for instead of having to roll the dice. Guitars to be on the lookout for are Xbox 360 Explorers and any type of Wii guitar. Explorers work as soon as you plug them in, no installation or adapter necessary, and for those outside of the top 20 players in the world, will work 100% perfectly fine. Wii guitars are the best guitars in general for top players and everyone else, but need a separate adapter to use. You can find the adapter on Rafnet's website, which will also be in the description. The adapter itself needs a program called Rafnet Adapter Manager, which allows you to modify your adapter to accept up to 1000 Hz of input frequency, meaning different inputs as fast as 1ms will be accurately measured by the adapter, though the 2ms setting is more reliable for preventing overstrums and maintaining input independence. With all guitars, there's multiple random attributes that can either improve or hinder your performance. If your frets feel a bit too sloshy or stiff, chances are you'll need to mod them to get them playing optimally. Luckily, XX760XX has a tutorial on how to do that, which will also be linked in the description. To find out what type of overstrum orientation your specific guitar has, go to the menu and flick the strum bar down, then count how many times the pointer moves up and down. You can use these overstrums and one finger raking to strum much faster than normal, depending on what type of switches the guitar has. If it overstrums too much, you can always cushion the strum bar by sliding paper between the faceplate and the strum bar itself on both sides, then taping it down. On Wii guitars, if the frets seem to go in and out or flicker in-game, you can take paper, fold it over the crease where your neck and faceplate connect, and if you've done it correctly, it'll be quite hard to put the neck back into the guitar. This holds the neck in place a bit better and will mitigate fret dropping. If your guitar does nothing in the menu, press the spacebar. This will bring up the controller or keyboard configuration menu. Once you're done setting all the things up in there, you should be 100% good to go for playing. For those of you who are brand new to the game and who have never gotten past medium difficulty back in the day, I brought a friend along to teach you how to hit the orange button. Here's Dupian. Thanks, Frosted. And welcome, noobs. This is the orange button. This is the boundary you must cross to play hard and expart. I know, it looks daunting. I mean, come on, look at where it's located. It's even farther than the blue button. How are you supposed to reach that? I mean, you only have one pinky, right? And look, look at the color. Look at the mixture of red and yellow. If you think about it, it's basically hitting two buttons at one time. And I know, orange, it's the color of fire, but it's not hot. You can touch it, it's safe to touch it. I will now display how to hit the infamous orange note. Notice the movement in my hand. The grace involved to hit the world's most difficult note. 
to hit. Back to you, Frosted. Thanks, Dupian. The actual gameplay mechanics themselves are visually self-explanatory. There are three note types. Strum notes, which are the opaque notes with a black and white top. Hammer-on and pull-off notes, called hopos, the opaque notes with a white glowing top. And tap notes, the transparent ones. Strum notes are the notes that need to be strummed every single time regardless of combo. Hopo notes only need to be strummed if you don't currently have a combo, and you get a combo by having hit the previous note. So technically, only the first hopo of a section needs to be strummed if you don't miss. As soon as you miss, however, you'll need to strum again. Tap notes don't need to be strummed at all, which is great for tapping related sections. A good song to play at the beginner level to see the differences between the different note types is Silvera by Gojira, which is also great for alt tapping practice. There are many, many different types of skill sets in Clone Hero gameplay. If you intend on being a top player, it's best to be rather versed in your gameplay style. Chords, tapping speed, strumming speed, technique, and plenty of other types can be worked on as a player. If you want to work a specific one of these, try asking any Clone Hero related Discord server, such as mine, which you can join via link in the description, or any of the others. They'll typically be able to give you specific songs to download to work on these skill sets. And that just about does it for this video. If you're new to the game, I hope to see you get some sick FCs in the future. Otherwise, thanks for the view. Have a day. Yeah, I don't know either. Subscribe!